there was a story that I heard in 87 for Full Metal Jacket, and I'm, I'm so curious if this is true. Did Anthony Michael Hall turn down the chance to be Private Joker? I don't know that he turned it down. Stanley said he told me that he had been interested in Anthony Michael Hall, but it was getting to, I think his dad was kind of his manager or whatever. Too expensive. Well, I heard it was a well, money decision that he chose another role for a larger paycheck. Which yeah, to he me, was a pretty, well, mean, pretty mean man, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, mean meaning frugal, over frugal. Very frugal. <laughs> over very, frugal. Very frugal. Yeah. I just yeah. think as an actor, do you turn down that opportunity? You, I mean, Not you unless you're an idiot. Well, the thing yeah. is, I have, to, I have to say, they say they turned it down. I've heard this from lots of actors. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. But it yeah, wasn't thing, actually an offer. Standing, yeah, it wasn't actually an <laughs> it offer. It was, are you available yeah. for the next four years yeah, to work yeah, yeah. on a Stanley Kubrick project? Exactly. But the answer's got to be yes. Yeah, it well, has to I mean, be, the I thing think. was that, it, as I was saying, you know, we, we don't really know if he turned it down. It, Stanley made it pretty clear to me that it, it was just getting too difficult oh. in negotiating. And, you know, There's believe you me, he wasn't that interested because if Stanley mm. wanted someone yeah, to play yeah. a part in his well, movie, yeah. They would be playing. They would be playing it. Yeah. That's the, uh, it. the thing that I find so fascinating about the films is how they change over the years as you come back to them. Um, Clockwork Orange was one of the first ones that I saw of his, mm -hmm. and as a young man, that's one that is immediately Scared appealing the hell and out of you. shocking. Mm -hmm. yeah. I find myself turning towards Barry Lyndon now. Uh, as an older man, it's that movie is devastating. So um, you're more mature, and uh, you've got a bit more sense now. It just seems like these movies, it is uncommon that movies are made today that can reveal themselves over time, that you can come back to and they are different films. Well, most of his are. I mean, you take 2001. When I was working on Barry Lyndon, Stanley said, do you want to see the original critiques for 2001? Not good. And I said, no, no, not good at oh, all. Oh, no. And then what he did Horrendous. was he had another, another piece of paper with the original critiques and who, who it was, the journalists who were doing it, and what they thought now, some years later, they'd gone back to see the movie, and it was like night and day. Suddenly, mm -hmm. it was fantastic experience and printed on the mind. So uh, it's not so important about the first weekend, then, not with, with Stanley. He's, he's going to have yeah, many yeah. weekends. Mm -hmm. no, well, it's, I, it's, it's the, the kind of movies you go back to time and time. But, you know, talk, mm -hmm. speaking of 2001, which is a good case in point, because <clears throat> Stanley uh, told me that the first screening Mm. Of that movie it was in Washington. It was for right. the Politico. Right, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. The he said there was a guy from MGM there with a counter. That's right. And he and so Stanley goes, uh, what's what's? He goes, there have been three hundred and seventy eight people that have left left this movie. Got up and yeah. walked out. <laughs> up yeah. and walked out. Yeah. Oh up and out. Yeah. And somebody said, I bet Stanley counted them all too. And you know, <laughs> the the, in, the interesting thing about that film, if it wasn't hadn't it been for the counterculture, the Village Voice mm. and the... And the LSD. Yeah, <laughs> the potheads, yeah. right, who kind of championed the film and went to see it in droves. And, and uh, you know, because we have a great friend, Mike Kaplan, who you know very well, but mm. Mike, you know, was one of the people that changed the ads from, uh, you know, being a space thing to the being... The original trip. The that fetus. Was the, the, uh, ultimate, the ultimate trip. The ultimate trip. trip. Uh, the most... That yeah, is that's the Mike. most mm. intelligent way to resell a movie. Brilliant. Yes. Mm. And then they'd put out sort of rumors about, you know, one of the apes had sneakers on and they'd all go yeah. back, being high as kites, <laughs> looking for the sneakers. <laughs> that weren't there, of course. Well, look, for I, the, look for the one in the sneakers, you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What I love now is I love seeing the reassessments happen. And I, I've noticed that Eyes Wide Shut, people have come around to right. it. And that's a film that Absolutely. in 99 I loved and I, I yeah. find very... Um, haunting and very right. sad. Yeah. Um, but I love that now that reassessment has begun for that film. That's and it right. does seem it takes Absolutely. almost a decade for any one of well, them. Well, maybe I'll have to go back and yeah, read it. I think he will. Me too. I'm going people, to have to you know, take yeah, because Documentaries, I, uh, people well, who actually well, making documentaries. Back to 2001, he said to me that um, <laughs> I had played uh, Diodato. Had a, had yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. He yeah. had the uh, 2001 theme. And oh. it's a kind of congruous and so forth. That, and he said that Diodato has made more money from that movie yeah. than I have. Oh. Yeah. Made more money from his album than yeah. I have made from the movie. movie yes. Well, can you imagine? Oh, I, he must have learned by that because he's, I think, Clockwork Orange music album mm. was the first film album to go platinum. Ooh. Well, yeah. First yeah. one ever. Yeah.
For the latest from HitFix, visit HitFix.com or download the new HitFix app on your Roku device.